But is it only my relationship with Victor, or is it? So just... why why don't we see him <clears throat> on all your vlogs? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Badminton Experience. My name is uh, Anna Santonsen. Besides me sits Hans Christian Wiesinghus, as always. Um, your two favorite Badminton reporters I've named us. I think that's a good name. You know, since I've named myself your favorite Badminton player, now we are their favorite Badminton reporters also. I can live with that nickname. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's a good name. It suits us well. In the audience today, we have um, Oliver. He's back on the camera. And we also have my brother, Kasper Antonsen. It's his first time in the studio. So, um, yeah, <laughs> welcome to welcome to Kasper. And, um, yeah, Hans, um, what are we going to talk about? Well, the main topic today is going to be the situation surrounding Victor Axelsen's move do, 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 to do, do, do. Dubai. So do, 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 a lot of you guys have been asking about it. So we thought it was uh, pretty relevant to take that up. So most of the uh, the topic today is going to be about that. It's but then, basically, you know, the only thing that's, you know, relevant in the moment. Nothing yeah. has really been going on in the sport, right? No, exactly. So, uh, yeah, we thought that was the most... Uh, obvious one and then of course we will take up a lot of uh, listener questions and i know you have even uh, a few ones picked out for me because after yeah. i complained last time there were no questions for me you guys actually uh did a better job this time and asked uh, quite a few for me so i appreciate that thanks yeah. a lot guys so i don't have to do all the talking exactly exactly yeah. but i do have a few for you as well okay um so what about you 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 of course we're going to talk about victor and uh, what what about the the women's double, the Danish women's double. You're not, you don't want to talk about that. Ah, we can do that briefly if you I want. I think we that. got a few questions about it yeah. last time. Yeah, we did. About so what? for everyone who's not from Denmark, we uh, at the Danish nationals uh, a few weeks ago, we had a uh, women's doubles finals where one of the pairs made a pose in Alexander Borg. They got called fault on their first four serves and six of the first eight, and they just kept on getting called fault, basically every mm. time they served yeah. so that set up a situation where the girls were not behaving in the best way possible they were of course being a bit frustrated and uh, complaining a lot and now there's actually been a uh, like a disciplinary hearing and they've uh, received a ban mm. do you actually know what the ban is yeah yeah um they have been banned for three months right um but it's only on Danish soil. Yeah, only on Danish soil. So that's because the Danish Badminton Association, they only have jurisdiction in Denmark. So they said that the girls cannot play individual tournaments on Danish soil for the next three months and also three league matches. So Team matches. Yeah. To me, that's a quite severe penalty. Um, but yeah, and I don't see that we have any previous episodes where players have been punished that hard without really no. doing something that's terribly terribly bad like we, we have a few examples of club players who have spit in the hand before they said wow uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, thanks disgusting. after the match and stuff like that and th this is all about two girls not behaving well mm. in court but yeah they didn't even got, get a yellow card or a red no card. That, that's one of the things that's quite unique with this case that they did not get a yellow card they did not get a red or a black card uh, the umpire said afterward that he didn't do that because he didn't want to escalate the situation but it is a bit strange that you can play a full match without getting a yellow card and then mm. after that you get a three month uh, yeah. ban and the media here in denmark they were they were harsh on the the two girls mid and alexandra yeah they were it was it was it was a pretty some pretty rough days for for, for those two girls i could imagine yeah and now uh, with, with, with three months banned also it's uh I don't think it's yeah. a fun situation to go through for them. No, uh, of but course not. I also imagine that the girls are going to appeal uh, the, yeah, yeah, the verdict they got. Uh, yeah. So they have one chance to uh, to appeal to a higher authority. So yeah. not, it's not going to be the Danish Babington Association who will uh, take up the appeal. It's going to be the uh, like DIF Danish uh, Sports Asso mm. Association. So yeah. basically the uh, National Olympic Committee, actually. So they're, they're not going to be able to play Denmark Open? As it stands right now, they're not going to be able uh, to do that. So that is, uh, yeah, for me, it's it's quite harsh. I yeah, understand that 
yes. in the media and everything it, it didn't look good what they how they behaved i i understand that but uh, in my opinion i think also the umpire should have stopped them mm. way earlier yeah and yeah. i think that's why he has the cards right he has a the chance to give yellow cards yeah, red cards black cards do you think the federation feels like a little bit forced to do something about it give them a penalty because of the medias and the the, the, the population's mm. uh, reaction to it because as mentioned, they were really harsh on the mm. girls and they really wanted to see some, you know, they wanted to see them get some kind of penalty for this or something. Yeah, well, it wouldn't surprise me that if they feel a, a bit of pressure also because it was on TV, live on TV. So obviously a lot of people saw it. And as you say, the, the media really, uh, really uh, put the story out there and kept mm. on producing articles all the time to keep the, the talk going. So obviously there was some kind of pressure, but... I, I don't want to believe that's the only reason why they, they pursued it, the Federation. I, I really don't hope so. I, I hope they did it because they felt that they crossed some boundary that they were not supposed to yeah. uh, to cross. And it's but, also the first time I've ever seen, you know, a change of, of service judge during mm. a match. Yeah, yeah, they did that after the first game, right? The, uh, yeah so the, yeah yeah after the first game they yeah. got in a new service judge but he was still calling yeah. false and but but <laughs> like in my opinion that the new service judge basically also had to keep on calling the false because yeah. if he did not do that basically the girls would be in the right complaining about the first service mm. judge saying that it, it can't be right we are serving like this all the time and we never get called and if the new service judge doesn't call it yeah it would look they bad might have a case yeah, yeah. So it would look bad on the first one. So that was uh, some some controversy here in the sport. You don't see that very often. No. There's um. But bad pu publicity <laughs> is better than no publicity, right? Yeah, I don't know. Ask, <laughs> ask the girls about that. Um, yeah, I don't think they will agree. <laughs> yeah, Hoko is. Uh, he, he pushed record this time. He did. I, I forgot it one time to push record, and now I have to hear about that every single time yeah but, but yeah Babich, you, i did record i did push record it's good yeah. that you made that mistake in in the very first episode so now you'll never do it again exactly exactly it's perfect but yeah that's not the only controversy in danish badminton no at the moment the other it's one not. obviously the one that all you guys asked about the situation with the uh, victor moving to uh, dubai and i'll say from the start that we won't be going into like every specific reason that he's put out there for his move but i think one thing that we can talk about is like how it affects like the training environment that we are in uh, every day and like yeah. what what were your first thoughts when uh yeah when you heard the news i guess it yeah it's probably pretty obvious that it wasn't news no. in that way to any of us we we knew before uh, the media did yeah exactly um yeah we we knew that victor was going to move to dubai um yeah it it wasn't breaking news for us but it actually got i think maybe it got leaked a little bit f before it was it was planned um so yeah i was you know kind of prepared for it i knew it that he 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 was not going to be there after the olympics um and i mean it's obviously it's obviously you know a, a big shame for for our practice because mm he is uh, irreplaceable i mean the level and the intensity that he brings to the practice is is unique you mm. can't get it from from anyone else so it's obviously you know it's 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 not good for our practice the level is it's not as as high as it was bef as it was before um but i mean what what can you do about it it's it's his choice and I mean, he he can do whatever he wants, mm. but um, yeah, I am I'm going to miss him for sure. Mm. He I was practicing with him a lot. We were most most of the time on the same court all the time. So yeah, yeah, I I've um you know as 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 well as you have and all the other players on the team, we have really um benefited from Victor being on on the practice. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's it's a new situation. I don't really know what to feel about it i mean i mean it, it is his choice mm. it is what it is and mm. we'll just have to move on i guess and um, but he will still yeah. be he will still be on the practice sometimes right um, yeah leading up to like 
championships like the Europeans, the World Championships, and also all the team events. He will be back, but we don't know exactly for how long. Will it be one week, two weeks, three, four? Yeah, whatever. It they need to kind of set that up with the uh, coaches. So we agree, uh, make an agreement between mm. Victor and, and the yeah. national team coach. Yeah. So yeah, but, it's not like we won't be training with him at all. But obviously, he's not there in the uh, in the daily uh, training. No, we haven't seen him uh, since the Olympics. But like. I'm, I'm obviously on the same page as you that I, I think it's a, it's a shame for for the the general overall praxis we have. But I also, I'm maybe not as concerned as what the media sometimes uh, has put it out there that that it is a big concern for the training environment because we are pretty used to good players quitting. Uh, I think the only concern is if two or three or four guys do it. <clears throat> We we should be able we should have a system in my opinion at least that can survive one good player mm. missing. Um, we've tried it before with players that quit stop their career. Like mm. when Gator stopped, he was still number one. So new guys had to kind of step up from there. And I, I think we've proven over many many years in the men's singles group that we are able to do that. That doesn't mean that I I would prefer. I, I would still prefer that Victor was there, of course, mm. but I'm just not that concerned in the long run, as long as it's only Victor who's leaving. Or obviously, if you also left or Gimke uh, also left, it would be a different situation. Mm. But for now, yeah, my level of concern is is not that high. Also, because what Victor is doing in Dubai, it may to people who are not in uh, like has a big knowledge of of the sport, they, they won't think that it's. Uh, like a big hassle and a lot of uh, work for him to set up a system like that but it is a lot of work so it's not like it's easy for Gemke for example to set up the same in Spain or um, Monaco or wherever uh, you would like to go so, so I'm not that concerned in, in the longer run I don't know if you would agree with that I think we I think we might experience that in the men's doubles a few mm. years back you know when Matthias Bowen Carsten Monsen was you know done and it was like I, I felt like it was Mass Conrad and Mass Collins turn, you know, to mm. be the best and yeah. and to you know raise the bar on the practice. But then Con Conrad d decided to to retire as well, mm. Mm. and I think that created like a gap yeah. where there w there were no you know next pair to take over mm. and and as mentioned you know yeah. set set the standard on mm. the practice. Um, so. Of course, we still have you know we still have me and you and Gemger and 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 all these uh, these good players <clears throat> coming up, um, but yeah, it's 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 a new situation. But I'm not I'm not that concerned either. Mm. Um, but um, I don't know. It 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 used to happen back in the days as well, didn't it? Like in yeah, modern Frost days and yeah, back in the like start of the 90s i think both frost and we had thomas stuart lauwissen uh, who won a bronze in 92 at the olympics mm. and i think one or two more guys paul ekoya maybe actually moved to england and lived there for a while but i think also back then that the system worked in a in a different way they okay. didn't have a national team set up exactly the same as we do today okay and i think it's maybe also a little bit hard to compare uh, in terms of how the general level of competition has, has raised over the years so I don't think we could be able to afford that you also moved away Gemke also moved away um, but hopefully that's not going to happen but you have teased that in your latest vlog right that you are moving you just didn't say I'm more. moving out of this apartment that's yeah. for sure you'll have to wait and see uh, where I'm going yeah. Um, but what I think is going to be really interesting to follow the next few months is how you are gonna handle it in practice because as we just spoke about <laughs> like there, no. there is a new guy that needs to be like the number one guy the guy that is raising the bar and i'm yeah. not saying you haven't done that at all but to me it's been pretty obvious that victor has been that guy yeah in our environment and obviously now you're by far the highest ranked guy we have so like in my opinion it will be your responsibility to do that yeah uh, and it's not like any one of me or Gemke <clears throat> or the other young guys we have should hide behind that we can also take responsibility but yeah. there is no doubt for me that the responsibility on your shoulders is, is growing now um, yeah yeah so and that's I mean, going to be interesting I'm, to follow I'm, I'm aware of that mm -hmm. um, yeah 
I am really aware of that. Uh, also, in, in in the first few weeks here, of course, I had to get back from from vacation and you know get into it at first. But I'm aware that I I have to be the one leading a little mm. bit now. And as as mentioned a few mm. times now, raising the bar on the mm. practice and yeah, just set it straight. I mean, show show the the young guys how we do. And um, most of the time, it was. Victor and me and uh, maybe Rasmus game we were on the court together mm-hmm. and you know um, now we practice a little bit more with you know the whole group which yeah. is a which is a good thing for everyone mm. um, but yeah I'm thinking a little bit like of course everyone gives their best already but it, it can of course get better um, all the time um, but I'm thinking a little bit that I have to you know educate mm. the, the next players yeah. a little bit um, and you know how how Yen and you and Victor was um, showing me how mm. to do a few years back. Mm. Now I have to do the same thing to mm. to the next generation and the yeah, players. You, you need to group. pass it on, right? Yeah, and uh, also for for um, for myself, I mm. mean, uh, the better sparring partners I can get, the yeah. better I can get. So of course it's uh, yeah so you don't see it like it's something you need to do for danish badminton or the other guys it's it's also a way to mm. help yourself right yeah yeah for yeah, sure obviously. both and uh yeah but I, of course i still hope that i can practice with victor here mm. and there sometimes mm. um when he's back in denmark mm. um yeah, yeah it's also going to be a quite uh, like interesting situation to see how we handle that when he's back home and he, he's back home and training with us in a, in a little bit different role because the the focus is not going to be the same on Victor. Obviously, he's been uh, along with you the uh, like the highest prioritized player when he's in training, and now he's kind of out of the system and only home as sort of a sparring, yeah, <clears throat> sparring player. You so think so? Don't you think he will be prioritized leading up to championships? I think he will, but I don't know if he will be prioritized the same way if he's going back home leading up to Denmark Open, for example, or no. All England, which are not tournaments that are prioritized as high for the the federation um so i I think no matter what it's going to be a little bit different for victor also to get uh to get back home when he uh, when he does that yeah maybe do do you think that people who you know like plays tennis or something is is watching this and why is it such a big deal because i mean yeah a sport like tennis i without being 100 percent sure i'm quite sure that they have you know their own setup their own mm. team all of them and that is you know a little bit similar to what victor is doing now yeah i think for sure that people who don't know babinson and f- or follow it really closely they will think that wh- why are they discussing that but yeah. if you know the history and tradition of babinson with these national team setups uh, i think it's pretty obvious why it is a big deal you don't mm. you don't really see that often the players who are at their very peak decides to go pro as we call it it's not like he wasn't a professional before but like go independent at least yeah Uh, and i think what is a little bit uh, i don't know if concerning is the right word but yeah i'll use that anyway a little bit concerning for victor is that we have seen with most players who turn pro or independent that in general the performances go down a little bit so it's going to be interesting to see if victor is able to set up a system that will keep him at the level yeah. where he is right now because obviously the system we have in denmark it's been working pretty well for him he won the <clears> world <throat> championships he won the olympics he's uh, yeah. won all england been world number one so it's not like our system is broken in in no. any way so that that's another part that to me is uh yeah quite interesting to follow and i, I think for me actually i've always talked talked for a bit of a change in Amazon that I would like it to be a bit more individualized and I, I think his move is is interesting that way um, uh, I'm not saying that that I, I would want to do it I don't think it, it's for me but I think it's quite interesting to see if you can build up a different kind of system and still succeed at the very highest level I don't doubt that no matter what he will still be a world-class player but mm-hmm. if he can still be able to to add on to his level that, yeah. that is going to be uh, fun to see if he can succeed with that and i'm also thinking like how how does it all look in like 15 years or something mm. because the 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 last 20 15 20 years i mean the money is in in this board has has been growing for sure gro- growing yeah. quite rapidly yeah um yeah. so i mean let what if in 
in like 20 years there's like 20 players who earns like mm. a lot of money yeah. i mean yeah because it, it does take a lot of money to do what victor is doing yeah. obviously yeah if does. you need to hire your own coach and you mm. need to hire your own uh, physical coach and you need to fly in some spying players as well and you might start thinking why do I have to, you know, stay in stay in Denmark the whole year? I can mm. go to somewhere where it's sunny and yeah, you know yeah. I can build like a, a nice environment for myself mm. and my friends and family. Mm. Maybe mm. I don't know, um, but it's definitely going to be interesting to to see. We actually had a question that in in kind of that the in that ballpark, uh, a guy asking um, if we see. It's it's actually uh, Mr. Asparagus. It is. Yeah, asking uh, if it's a good thing if more and more players are going pro. <clears throat> uh, so what what do we think if badminton changes to a club system like football or the way they do things in uh, in tennis? Do, do, would you say it would be a, a good thing if we went pro more for it? So if it it's not that based on federations and national team setups. It's it's a it's a huge question. <laughs> I it mean, is, there is. It is really a huge question. Um, I think there are some things that would be better if the federation um, wasn't in the same control as there is right now. Mm. Um, for instance, I mean, what we are doing right now and what you are doing with your podcast and mm. um, and what we do on our social media, trying to promote ourselves a little bit um, and might get different companies interested in us you know mm. um because we need to earn money of course and mm. we would like to make some sponsorships here and there i feel like there is a lot of players around the wor- world um who's not you know giving any thought to that at mm. all um mm. and i don't know if it's because they are funded by their federation mm. they don't even have to think about for one second that Oh, I have to manage my social media platform yeah, because they get everything paid for and they even get a salary. Exactly. Yeah. So we're a little bit forced to do that. Mm. Um, luckily, I, I think it's quite fun, but mm. we are, we're a little bit forced to do that, to get our name out there and mm. try to build a platform. Um, and I would, I would just love to see some of, you know, I mean, some, some of the players from, I mean, I don't know. Japan, China. I would like to see a little bit more of their personal character. Yeah, um, I think that would make it way more fun for for the for the badminton fans mm. if they knew a little bit more about you know Ching Long or Son Ban Ho from Korea when he was world number one. And mm. <clears throat> of course, there is big big names out there, and I'm not saying that no one does it. Mm. Um, but um, I feel that that might be one of the it would be it would be quite good if the players are forced mm. to you know think yeah. about those things a little bit. I yeah. don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think again, like I've I've always been talking for more individualization in, in badminton, but I think we are even though money is growing, I don't think we are at a at a place right now where badminton could actually make that move and make it completely individualized because money is basically only growing in the top of the sport as i see it. it's not like the players who are outside of top 50 for example in in singles they earn a lot of money even guys outside of top 40 uh, will will struggle a little bit so they won't be able to afford all the expenses on on their own uh, so i don't think we are at a at a place right now with badminton where we could go down that route yet um but i think in the long run if we look yeah, 15 25 years ahead I would like it to go down that road because okay. I think then you would also force players to do exactly what you what you were talking about there because mm-hmm. you would force the players to be to brand themselves better and yeah make make a living that way make money to uh, to pay all of the expenses and right now I should say a lot of players they have it like a little bit easy because they they just get everything uh, paid for if they have the yeah. the right level uh, on court of course yeah. So yeah, it is. It is actually a, my my dream that we go there some someday. But I I don't see the sport being uh, financially ready yet. And I think especially now with Corona and the money going out a little bit, we are taking a few steps uh, backwards. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the how the sport will evolve during the during the next 10, 20, 30 years. What do you think? 
what Victor is doing here is is that um how do you say that will it help for i mean your vision where you want to see the sport in in the future is it you know like helpful to that vision or i think if he succeeds i i think it it would be but i don't see it as a like a massive step in that direction again because i don't see a lot of players having the financial power to do the same um like maybe if he was able to set up like a full academy where he's also training himself that's kind of what they also have in tennis they have academies in spain or in the states where where you can train with the best coaches and so on if if he was able to do that victor then then maybe that would be a bigger step yeah. forward but i don't see his the project that he's building right now is is going to be that it's still a project that's mainly about improving victor axelson and mm. not improving uh, 10 15 20 30 players yeah should, well yeah should we wrap that up and say yeah yeah Let's move on to another few questions. Yeah. We have quite Let's a few. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. So I will go with the first one for you, Anas. Um, okay. Question time. Yeah. Question time. Um, this is basically, or actually, it's a, a question for both of us, but I'll just ask it to you and then maybe I can answer afterwards. <laughs> it's uh, Rickard uh, Ill who's asking, uh, have. Ah, uh, I have the same one here. Ah, oh, you do? You do? Damn yeah, it. But, uh, but that's a good one. It's a good okay. one. Have you, some of you, someone of you been really good in doubles or mixed back in the days? And what partners did you have in each category? And why did you choose singles in the end? I mean, I, I chose the question <laughs> because I have a good story and I know like you've been yeah. quite good and yeah. are still quite good right in doubles. I mean, us us single players really do not have much respect for the double, <laughs> double categories. We always believe that we could be extremely good in in whatever category we ended up choosing that's unfortunately true yeah it is but it it might not be true that we actually would no 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 i don't think that is true but we all have that belief that we could succeed um, in the other categories no um i i played both uh, men's double and mixed double when i was a junior player i think i stopped playing mixed doubles when i was like under third oh no under 15 and men's double, I was playing up until under 17 or something, I think. Um, so, yeah, I, I believe I was quite good doubles player. Some of the some of the qualities that I have in my game is is um, some qualities that is also quite suitable for doubles. Mm. You know, like... Um, the, 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 like you're really lucky. Like I'm really lucky yeah. and, you know, I'm quite fast with the racket. So, I mean, in the flat... <laughs> yeah, now I'm yeah. compl- complimenting myself, but you know, in the flat game and and the game at the net and mm. stuff like that, yeah. um, I feel I'm I feel I'm quite good. I feel Casper like is laughing down there. <laughs> um, we actually ha- right now in the audience we have the under 19 junior champions. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Now they are clapping. <laughs> <laughs> can can we show a picture just right here of you two on the podium? Of course. They won it in, in Ankara back in, when was that? 13. 13? 13. 2013, so it's been a few years. Yeah. You, you should might start practicing again a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 2012, yeah, okay. But you actually played the uh, Nationals in men's doubles. Yeah, I did. Two, two years ago? No. No, it was last year. Last year? Yeah, last yeah, year so I, one pl- and a half I years played ago. the I played men's doubles with uh, Matthias Christiansen. And we lost in the semi-final to to uh, Kim and Anas, the best pair in Denmark. But we lost in 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 three games, so um, that's not bad. No, I, I I mean I think that we should have won that match. If you ask me, yeah. we didn't play our best at all. Yeah. So I'm still and, and I'm Kim still Kim and Anas did for sure. Play yeah, the they did. They yeah. they've never played better. Yeah. So I'm still a little bit disappointed about that. Yeah. What about you? You still play mixed doubles sometimes at, at the nationals. Right. Uh, I've only played it once at okay. senior level, but that's now two and a half years ago. I played with Mike and Fuergard and lost the semifinal to Christina Pedersen and yeah. Matthias Christiansen. Uh, but Christina Pedersen is that one good story I have about my mixed doubles career because I yeah. actually told her in under 17 that I did not want to play with her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she used to be my mixed doubles partner <laughs> in under 17, but then, yeah. Uh, she was I, not good enough back then. No, I decided that I wanted to focus on uh, singles, so I told her that. 
Was it because she wasn't good enough, or because you just wanted to focus not focus on singles? Ah, it was only because I wanted to focus on singles. It's okay. always been my like my main focus. Uh, I think it's a lot more fun than to play doubles. But I actually prefer mixed doubles or women's doubles. I, I think that's you more do? fun. But I also think that it's because it suits my game better. Like yeah. my playing style, I can I can use more of my my uh, yeah, the big part, uh, the good parts of my game in, in mixed doubles than I can in uh, in men's doubles. I feel like there's there's a lot of single players who could be quite good in mixed double. I believe. Yeah, I agree. Like uh, Joachim Fischer, he was also yeah, a also single, a very good singles player. Yeah. Also a singles player before yeah. he started to. No, I don't know if he started to play mixed doubles or if he was just playing both at the same time. No, he was actually playing men's singles and men's doubles at the same time. Okay, uh, but then he was kicked off the national team and then he came back in and uh, played mixed doubles instead. Okay. And yeah, had had quite good success. Had a great career after that. Yeah, great guy. I love Fischer. He's uh, we should have He's him a on cool the guy. podcast. Yeah, we should. We should. Jo- Joachim Fischer. Yeah. But uh, I think he will be talking all the time, so <laughs> he can perfect. just do his own show. That's perfect. Uh, next question for you, Anas. What uh, about? And no, I I ask you a question now. No, no, no. Okay. I want this first, okay. and then you can ask me Fair one. Enough. Is that a deal? Fair enough. Uh, it's we we had one from Global Badminton Network. Uh, and I think this question suits you pretty well because you're so much into uh, MMA. And he is asking if uh, if having so many big tournaments now dilutes the experience of watching the big players. Like, for example, if we only saw Victor Axelsen or you three or four times a year, would it make it like a bigger spectacle? Would it be better for the sport? Because that, that's what they do in MMA, for example. Like mm-hmm. You don't see Conor McGregor fight. Uh, yeah. 15 matches uh, a year. I also think the reason why they don't do that is because it's, you know, quite brutal sport. I mean, you can... It's a little bit hard at the yeah. time. <laughs> so yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. think... I think you will get injured a lot if you if you fight, you know, like, yeah. once, a, once a month. But I don't know about that. It would be a whole different setup, a whole different tour, but it mm. would be interesting, mm. you know, to build it up like a fight card, you know, yeah prelims and then a co-main event and main event it, w- it would be quite fun um i think one of the good things about that that kind of you know setup is that you can you can build a better show around a, around the event mm. you know there is time in between the matches there's only one match at the time and you can do all sorts of entertainment uh, mm. in between the matches and I sometimes feel like it's it's not really an enjoyable experience for for the audience when there's like five matches mm. at the time yeah. and then you know a women's double steps on court down there in the end and then it you know you, you, then it finishes another one comes on there's no like hyped intro yeah. there's no yeah. there's no show really it's only maybe at the quarterfinals semifinals finals that there is like a nice show for the audience. Yeah. Um, so I definitely, as a as a viewer, I, I would definitely um, rather watch an, a boxing event or an MMA event where it's mm-hmm. built up like that and it's built for entertainment. Yeah. Um, so a good combination between entertainment and and sport is, uh, is really nice. Mm-hmm. I, I like to watch stuff like that. But it's, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a long discussion as well. It is, it is, and obviously <laughs> we're not any, like we're not close of that happening in badminton because no. it would be a, like a huge fundamental change of uh, of how the the sport is yeah. uh, is built up. But I like the I like the idea. Mm. Yeah. All right. Pay pay per views. Pay per views. Yeah, it, that it, would might, be it nice. might be the future. Question for me, Anas. <clears throat> yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's I don't. I don't really know if I like how the question is formulated, <laughs> but it's what is HK visiting whose strategy in the upcoming tournaments? And I don't want you to reveal your like game plan no, like no. in in details. <laughs> and then it says, what are your goals now, HK? And that was mm. you know the one that I wanted to talk about because it's no secret that you are an old man. That you is are no secret. Thirty-five years old. A man you, in my you, best. Age. You have been in the sport for a long, <laughs> long time. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I, I remember like a half, was it like a half year ago where I was, you know, 
I don't know what I was doing, but poking poking fun at you is that yeah. the yeah. expression? I think people a understand bit. what you mean. Okay, yeah. so I asked you during a, a practice session. At this point in your career, are you just practicing to maintain your level, mm. or do you still have still have the mindset that you actually want to get better at ev- every practice mm. at the age of thirty five? Mm. Because I felt like there was a maybe a lack of you know motivation and mm. hunger. I felt mm. it in you at some point. Mm. So so that's that's basically just my question: is mm. what is your goal from now on, HK? Yeah, well, my like my main goal right now and you is, can cry if you want <laughs> <laughs> it's completely focused on thomas cup so it's very very short term actually that yeah. i want to be in the best possible shape for that event i want to be a part of the team of course but i only want to be there if i believe i can make a difference for the team so if i'm called upon in the third man singles i need to be at a place where i feel i can win those matches yeah. um so that that is like the main goal for me um but I've, I've said now for a couple of years that I think the perfect place for me to finish my career, if I could dream, was at the World Championships in Denmark in 2023. Um, and that I'm, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I can just feel that it, it it's on my mind more and more that I, I thought it could be pretty cool to, mm. to be playing yeah, World Championships at home again. I tried it once before. Um, so yeah. so that, that I, I would say, is is starting to groom into some sort of goal that I can uh, I can still be at and I need to be world class mm. to qualify obviously yeah. with the young guys coming up from Denmark this federation is not going to pick me if I'm 45 in the world I need to mm. be at the level I'm at now where I'm, I'm top 20 so I don't have like a set of target where I say I have to be top 20 or top 15 I just yeah. I have to still be world class to yeah. be able to play at those world championships and to do that to answer your other question, uh, do I train to maintain or get better? I think if I need to be at that level, I need to get better all mm. the time. I cannot just maintain my level because then um, oh. my game is not that sophisticated. Uh, so people will just kind of figure me out if I just maintain and maintain. And I, I think over the course of my career, I've also uh, developed my game. Um, I play after a different game plan that I did five years ago and, and 10 years ago. Um, so I, I think I need to still develop, but I also understand, and I said that to you before as well, I understand why you asked that question at the time, because I was losing my way a little bit. I also uh, spoke about that on my own podcast, actually, that I was I was just uh, I was just at training. I did what I had to do, mm. but I, yeah. I wasn't really invested uh, yeah. into it. And I, I, my explanation for it was also that it was during uh, COVID and there was nothing to look forward to and I can feel that that part of just training all the time that doesn't excite me the same way as it did oh. five years ago or ten years ago uh, I need to have these short term goals uh, yeah. that I can uh, look ahead to for, for me to find it uh, really interesting yeah but the reason why I also ask is that I'm I, th- I think it's interesting I mean I can't imagine being 35 I mean so I, <laughs> you I will be someday I, I will be someday so I'm just interest, <laughs> interested in how my mindset will be at well. that time because I can to- I totally get why you might get, in- get into that routine of just showing yeah. up at yeah. practice and then doing a good job but you're not doing that extra mm-hmm. bit um, but there's also no doubt that I'm I'm not training. Not, not saying that you don't do that no but yeah, I was just, just going to say that that there's no doubt I'm not doing as much as I did before, uh, I have other priorities also now with my family here, yeah, life, mm. and that that just takes away some opportunities mm. for putting in that extra yeah. uh, bit of work. But I'm also I'm content with what I can do and what what I uh, what I do now. And I, I think in terms of where my motivation level is, I'm doing uh, yeah what I can and what I feel uh, good about. But I'm also very aware that I'm not putting in as much hours as you are, for example, or Victor is. Um, but that's that's the way I've chosen to prioritize. And I think if I tried to live like you guys, uh, I wouldn't be able to be in it, actually. Like, it, it wouldn't... You wouldn't be able to have a family. No, I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> so feel. Would, I wouldn't uh, feel comfortable. Break up uh, with you. Yeah, <laughs> she probably would. She probably would. So I wouldn't yeah. feel comfortable uh, doing it that no. way. I get it. Yeah. Um, do you have like now you mentioned the world championships do you have like a, a, a few tournaments that you really want to you know 
reach a semi-final you know a final or yeah well all england has always okay. been like the one tournament for okay. me i have that one semi-final in in 16 uh but i would really like uh, another shot or two uh, yeah. at that event <clears throat> um yeah obviously all the other big ones are also quite nice but it is like all england world championships uh yeah. thomas cup of course that i would like to uh, perform at you won the australian open yeah. australian open back in 2016 correct yeah that was a good year 2016 but it hasn't been it, it, it has not been played for a few years now right uh, i think it's just been downgraded okay uh, i think it is being played but yeah basically not now because i only the, been there COVID. once yeah i lost to lee hyung il in the first round and then right after the match i got a migraine attack so <laughs> so it was a perfect trip uh, i once blew four match points against uh <laughs> Shrikhand in the first round wow in australia and the week before i played him in indonesia i also blew a match point in the first <laughs> round so i had two weeks <laughs> traveling and i blew five match points against the uh, Shrikhand. Shrikhand. but then came back next year and won that's okay okay it's all good <laughs> <clears throat> what about this question Hans because this is maybe the most uh, asked question in the history of my YouTube channel ah oh, yeah it we is, forgot that one it's about um, okay I'll just read it here can you tell us about your relation with Victor Axelsson <laughs> is there much rivalry he never he never seems to be with you guys hanging out at tournaments not even the team Euros it's actually such a frequently asked question that even on my podcast, like my own way, you're not even part of it. Okay. People are beginning to ask me why you're not talking about it on the badminton experience. But is it only my relationship with Victor or is it like... I think it's basically mostly yours okay. because you guys are okay. like the two competitors are rivals, right? Yeah. I don't think I people so. see me as much as a rival. I don't think you see no. me as the same kind of rival either. So just, why why don't we see him <clears throat> on all your vlogs? You see all the other guys like me, Bobby, <laughs> Kelly. Everyone. I just I just not Victor. I don't I don't I don't. I don't why really, do you hate him so much? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like to you know talk about my relationship with you know all sorts of people. I mean, it's just I don't want to gossip or mm. is is that the yeah. right word to use? But I guess there is a quite simple explanation for why he's not so much included in the blogs and stuff like that and why you don't see us engage as much as I might do with, with you guys yeah. and some of the other players is that, and I think Victor would tell you himself, that he is really much just on his own. Yeah. I mean, he, he spends most of his time alone when we are out traveling in the world. He... I don't really know why, but that's just how he has chosen to conduct himself mm. when being on tour and at tournaments. <clears throat> I think he does better when he's alone. Mm. Um, so that's just actually the simple explanation. It's really not like I don't want to engage with Victor in the vlogs and stuff like that, but he's basically not so much around as mm. as the other guys yeah, and you can see all your vlogs like you try to make it uh, <clears throat> like pretty natural when you engage with people right mm -hmm. so if you had to get victor on you would basically have to set it up right yeah he, he's yeah. not he's as you say he's not there as much and also i also have to respect that certain people might not want to be mm. recorded all the time i mean i can't expect everyone just to be ready to get filmed at, at any given time so what we also did during this olympic training uh, period um we just made a deal that if i was going to show him while we did exercises and practice it was only go only going to be like a, a shot here and there mm. we was not going to show like long sequences of me and him playing a rally or mm. uh, uh, you know because i mean he he might wanted to not show so much of his practice leading up to the Olympics, yeah, maybe hide yeah. it a little bit for mm. from the other players. I don't know why, um, mm. but that's just, I mean, that's just one of the things that, yeah. of course, I, I respect that. Um, and so that's what you're saying is that's that basically it. So you don't hate him? No, I don't hate Victor at all. I, it's like, a, I mean, it's like a love hate relationship, to be honest, because <clears throat> I've um, learned so much and, and gained so much from being around Victor. 
um, and I really appreciate that 100%. But also we are like rivals because mm. he's two in the world and I'm three in the world. <laughs> yeah. So of course we are also like big rivals. So it, it is this kind of weird relationship, but yeah, I can, I can guarantee you that I don't hate Victor and it's not like, but it's there's I mean, mutual it's, respect between the yeah two I guess so and some of the comments is just so stupid sometimes yeah, yeah. that like <clears throat> I saw one a few a few weeks back like uh, why don't you make a podcast with Big Sarkis and uh, do you hate him yeah. I mean we have done five episodes <laughs> of this Benson experience and we have had no guests on yeah. so do we hate everybody everyone or yeah, yeah. I mean it's just so ridiculous sometimes yeah. but uh, I mean people love to hear the gossip and stuff like that but. I just really don't want to to get into it so much. It is it is a fine relationship. Yeah. So that's basically it. We don't hate. I don't hate him. I don't. I think certainly you don't hate, hate, do you, him, do you hate him. No. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I was actually on the phone with Victor the other day. So yeah. We had a nice conversation. Yeah. So. And I was texting him here yeah. the other day. So. So there is no issue it's, at all. It's it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. But of course, it's also. I mean, the rivalry is also intense sometimes yeah. because we we chase the same things yeah, the same, same titles and the yeah, same yeah. dreams so of course there is there is i mean there's some competition there that is yeah. it's hard to it's hard to explain yeah. but i mean i think it's beneficial for both of us that there is this you know tense feeling sometimes yeah. also in our practices yeah. and i guess that's also one of the things that i'm going to miss the most <clears throat> because it is in some ways, it's a little bit um, <clears throat> uncomfortable mm. to be in practice with Victor mm. because, as mentioned, the rivalry we have is a little bit intense. We chase the same things and mm. stuff like that. So it's a little bit strange to, you know, be so close to the one of your biggest uh, one of rivals. your big, biggest ri rivals. Oh. Um, but I think that's I'm going to miss that feeling mm. of, you know, being a little bit tense at practice. Mm feeling like yeah i don't know I, I just feel like it's it's not going to be good for me not to have that feeling i think it pushes me to do that extra bit um yeah i understand to 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 see him there and see how he he's you know killing it in training sometimes and stuff like that so whoa that was a lot about no. victor in this um but he is the olympic champion the most relevant player in the in this ball right now i believe don't you think so yeah, apart from me, I think. Apart that's from true. you, yeah. So, so I think that's also a good way to wrap it up. We've yeah. been talking uh, a long time now. Yeah, it was a. I I feel like it was a great episode. Uh, we got into some deep shit. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> deep. Casper is not sleeping yet, and uh, Babich has a huge grin on his face. So I think we did well. Huge what? Grin. Grin. Yeah, that's like kind of like a smile. Smile. Okay. Like a smirky smile. Okay. Yeah. But well, let's. If you um, don't know what it is, just look at his face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> let's wrap it up. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the questions. Thanks for asking me a few this time as well. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it and keep the comments coming. And as always, they should subscribe, right? Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are we are thinking about. I don't know if we should say that now, but we are thinking about making a, a another channel for this podcast only. It might happen in the future. Did but you see that our last episode actually did really well? It did. More than 20,000 views. We are going for 25 this time. We are? Yeah. But I think it was because we had Anthony Ginsing in, yeah, the, but now in we the have, title. Now we have Victor in it. Yeah, but we also had that last time. So we clickbaited them last time. All right, 20 again. <laughs> <laughs> we Thanks, go, guys. We, we aim for 15. Thank you very much, guys. Please subscribe to the channel. Leave your reactions, your comments in the comment section. Uh, we love to, to hear all your questions and just your feedback in general. And stay tuned for more awesome content in the future. It's going to be vlogs and it's going to be, I say it every time, training tutorials. It's coming soon. <laughs> and also some more podcasts. See you guys in the next episode. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's the motherfucking deal, double G. <laughs>